Hello, thanks for tuning into this episode. Before we start, Fintech Focus TV is brought to you by Harrington Star, global leaders in financial technology recruitment. Head to the Harrington Star website and check the links below so you can download the latest copy of the Financial Technologies magazine. And also, we've got the TradFi and DeFi Era of Convergence documentary coming up. If you're interested in the merger of the two, please get in touch. Thanks a lot and enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to another episode of Fintech Focus TV with me, Toby Babb. Today I am very, very thrilled to introduce you to Helen Disney from the Realisation Group. Helen, how are you? Good to see you, Toby. Lovely to have you on. Not just talking about the Realisation Group today, we're also talking about something that we've been doing together, which is the Era of Convergence, which is not only a documentary, not only an event, not only a financial markets insights paper, but a whole movement is something that we've been really passionately seeing in the marketplace. So era of convergence might not mean anything to people who are just looking at home at the moment and watching this and thinking, what, what are they talking about? Give us a bit of a thought process about how this all started and how this conversation came about. Sure. See, I think what's interesting is how the traditional finance world and the decentralised finance world are coming together. And what I've seen in my background coming from uh, working with cryptocurrencies and blockchain firms since 2014 and now being more involved in traditional finance is actually these two worlds are colliding, they're merging, mm. they're coming together in different ways. So initially the whole idea of Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrency was to cut out the middlemen, to sort of get rid of the banks, have money without government. But actually what's really happening is that traditional firms are seeing there's a lot of innovative potential in this area. They either want to embrace digital assets as investments or they want to open their own digital asset initiatives or they want to harness blockchain for enterprise solutions. And equally, the blockchain and cryptocurrency companies are realising, you know, a lot of our investors, a lot of our target market is actually incumbent firms. It's not just about the retail investor, which it was at the beginning. It was mm. a movement that came from individuals, you know, exploring and, and buying cryptocurrencies. But now a lot of the movement and the action is actually from, you know, large firms, pension funds, asset managers, banks wanting to invest. So we're seeing these two worlds kind of converging and coming together and we thought that was a really interesting thing to explore. Yeah, I think it, it sort of came together, didn't it, where both of us were seeing in our, in our different worlds. So, so obviously Harrington Star as a recruitment company is led by customer sentiment and company demand and in capital markets, most of our work had traditionally come through fixed income equities, et cetera, et cetera. And there was this growing sort of movement and noise around this uh, new forager at the door, which was the, you know, the digital asset and crypto, as I guess, as an asset class in itself suddenly coming a lot closer into that world of traditional finance. And we were talking, as, as we do, with you guys, and it was this is something which is happening, we're hearing more and more uh, mm. yeah, demand about, and, and a lot of your, uh, I guess, TradFi clients were starting to have more input into that DeFi world. So yeah. tell us a little bit about the Realisation Group and, and how that came about and where that sort of, you know, that grew with you guys as well. Yeah, well, you see it all the time. I'm just going back to what you were saying just last week. We put out a press release for a, a US client that's a, an investment bank that's just hired two uh, senior executives from crypto native firms. So this is happening all the time. Mm. And I think our specialism has always been financial services. That's what the Realisation Group does. But increasingly, financial services is, you know, it's obviously we've embraced fintech. But cryptocurrency and blockchain is now becoming a much bigger subset in its own right, but it's also becoming an integral part of the traditional finance. It's not just a standalone thing. And so we're really at that kind of intersection of the traditional finance and the decentralized finance world. Our clients want to come to us because we do have that traditional finance background and also we're an established full service agency, whereas to some extent PR and marketing in the crypto world is still a bit nascent, but also the traditional firms, you know, they realise that they don't know everything about this world. They mm. want to embrace it. They want to understand it. But they need to understand, you know, the right people to speak to, the right publications to get published in, the right networks to be part of. And so bringing together that traditional expertise that the realisation groups always had in financial markets together with our growing specialism in crypto and blockchain means we can pull those two worlds together. Mm. And I think it's just as much as, as, as crypto you mentioned there as an asset class. The secondary part behind that is the is the technology and blockchain. And I think people in the TradFi world are as excited about that as they are above anything else potentially within it. And yeah, maybe more so. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think people often assume that it's just about cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum or many, I mean, there are thousands of others now. But that's just one aspect, you know, cryptocurrency as money, if you like, as currency or as an investment is one part of it. But 
you've now got lots of different types of digital assets. So you've got obviously a lot of talk about NFTs, non-fungible tokens, which is a way of sort of asserting your intellectual property right over a piece of art or a piece of music or a performance or something else of value online that otherwise other people might be able to, to take or copy. Um, you've got kind of digitization or tokenization of traditional securities. So, you know, a tokenized house or, you know, another kind of asset or a bond. And then you've got blockchain itself as the underlying technology underneath cryptocurrencies, which can be used above and beyond cryptocurrency. It's not just about that. It's about being a kind of base layer of being able to track and audit a kind of set of activities and have transparency about what's happened. So blockchain is almost like an audit trail, really, of, of activity. Mm. And that's very, very useful in all kinds of areas, whether it's supply chain or, you know, tracking healthcare data or lots of other different applications. So investors can also be investing in those businesses, not just in the cryptocurrency itself. I think that's really interesting, isn't it? Because we, we've started now to speak to a number of different people across this in, in exploration of the documentary. So both you and I have been uh, running all over the place, talking to various different people and, and getting their thoughts on exactly what you know what's happening and where the potential is. And the interesting thing for me about this and the conversations I've had so far is, is there are different pockets of excitement in different pockets of the area. And we've, we're speaking to you know, large established businesses. We're talking to... You know, small incumbents, we're talking to traditional vendors in, in capital markets, we're talking to people who are on global bases, and, and then we're talking about some DeFi organisations who are, who are there and, and their interest in that TradFi world at the same time as well. And it's a really interesting kaleidoscope that you get when you start talking to people, and this is, you know, it's very much like an onion, isn't it? The more you peel, the, 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 the more you're revealing all the way through mm. it. Tell me a little bit about what you're seeing and what's exciting about the conversations you're having in it all. It's great talking to people, I mean, this is such a fascinating area, and Things are evolving all the time. So I, I genuinely believe that every single business will be affected by this trend. It could just be something as simple as you decide to accept cryptocurrency as a form of payment for your business, just another mm. means of payment. But it could be much more in-depth than that. So you know, I actually went to the first shop I've been to out in Spain on holiday where there was a sticker on the window saying we accept Bitcoin as well. <laughs> for, for yeah, well, right back in 2014, I think there used to be a coffee shop in London that would take Bitcoin Is that to right? buy coffee, probably the most expensive coffee in the world. <laughs> yeah, think so, about yeah, the inflation yeah, yeah. and the price of Bitcoin, but it was a very sort of popular thing in those days for the early kind of aficionados of Bitcoin to find. There was an, a pub as well, I think, that, that took Bitcoin payments in East London. <laughs> it was all in East London, because obviously course, that's where all the cool things happen. <laughs> yeah. That's where I live. So. There you go. But um, yeah, I mean, that's a very simple example. But, you know, really DeFi or decentralized finance is the idea that you would be able to essentially decentralize any form of activity that happens in finance right now. So you could have a decentralized mortgage, a decentralized loan, a decentralized equity. You know, lots of different things could be done essentially by computers automating all of the activities. So mm. if we go back to what we were talking about at the beginning about getting rid of the middlemen, really the middleman has become the technology. If you have a technology that allows you to trust the other side of the transaction, then you no longer need a bank to say, well, this has happened, or a clearinghouse, or a, you know another kind of intermediary, then if the technology and the mathematical process says, I, I can prove to you that this transaction has taken place, then all of a sudden everything can be automated. So you get a huge explosion of different things you can do mm. and the convergence comes not just from traditional finance and decentralized finance coming together so I think that's a, another aspect of, of what we're talking about when we say the era of convergence which might sound a bit grand but there are many different technologies that have come about that are all joining together so it's not just blockchain or distributed ledgers it's not just cryptocurrencies it's the fact that you can combine these technologies with artificial intelligence, with what's going on in the Internet of Things, with the metaverse, which is another whole aspect that we can talk about. So, you know, you can create new business models, new ways of doing things, new ways of investing and trading and running businesses that we've never had before. Yeah, and it's really exciting. I think every time you are talking to someone about, you know, you mentioned it's a grand title, etc., with the era of convergence, mm. but I think it means something to everyone who we're talking about and they can see this sort of moving together and the possibilities behind it. And I think, you know, there's a very interesting piece there about, as we've seen in various cycles before in financial technology, both sides recognising that there's an importance for, for the two to work together as opposed to uh, one take over the other or one squash the other. It's, mm. it's the, the whole thing about how can we move this further forward. And I think what's interesting about the documentary and bringing that back together is it's focused on a story. And the story sort of starts at the beginning where we talk about the birth of Bitcoin. 
We then move on a little bit to the rise of blockchain, cryptocurrencies, tokenization. We move on to the convergence as it happens and then what the future looks like mm. as well. So talk to us a little bit about that shape and what that looks like. Yeah, so I think, you know, it was really, I guess, over a decade ago now that this all began. The white paper was published by Satoshi Nakamoto. This started a whole kind of movement, which has been going on for a while before that with technologists trying to come up with a way of, of essentially creating an online form of money. And, you know, it all coincided with the 2008 financial crash with people distrusting banks because they've become so overextended and created such complex products and I think it was almost like a back to basics of saying we want the people or the users to be able to take back control of the system um, and I think there is a lot of power in that idea still I think that blockchain and cryptocurrencies do allow networks to be sort of created from the ground up rather than top down centralized way and I think with the modern world and the internet that's the best way we we have probably found to make changes because we all know that there's a lot of old creaky kind of legacy systems in centralized finance and it's not that centralized finance is necessarily bad it evolved for a reason you know you had in the past merchants you had you know people trading with stones and you know different kind of tokens essentially that represented money there were these islanders on this place called yap that had these stones that you marked and they were kind of like the first blockchain you know they were a way of just keeping track of who owed what to who so, you know, we're, we're just modernising something that's been around for a very long time. But I think the fact that you can now do so much of your other activity in life online, you know, the internet has been a wonderful thing. It's given us so much information. You know, the idea that you would have to ring up the train station to get the timetable or, or drive down there to go and ask somebody what time the next <laughs> yeah. train was. You know, now in two seconds you find it on your phone. And that's kind of the transition we're trying to make with money. Is yeah. How can we, obviously we can do digital payments now, we can you know, use PayPal and we can use other mechanisms, but those still require a company like PayPal in the middle. And I guess what's trying to occur is to get rid of that middle step and just to be able to say you and I can trade directly, whether it's you and me as individuals, Toby and Helen, or whether you know, you're JP Morgan and I'm another financial institution over here, that we could actually just make things a lot more efficient. It's got such huge potential, isn't it? And, you, yeah. and you're right there, it's, it's, it's the classic themes of efficiency, productivity, you know, friction removal that comes up time and time again in the sort of, I guess, discussion around the financial services space. And what I think is really interesting about this is it does just herald a whole new era. And you know, a lot of people I've been talking to about it effectively equate it to the electronification of the markets in terms of the scale that it can have and, and how it can fundamentally change uh, everything within it. Yeah. I mean, you think back to things like, you know, you used to have a trading ring. You know, I went to yeah. a museum in Liverpool a few months back and, you know, it shows the ring where the cotton traders were yeah, standing funny, around. It? And it's great to see that because it reminds you that actually there was a different way of doing things. Yeah. But trading is still trading. Yeah. It's just that we, we do it differently. Just less stripy yeah. jackets. Less shouting. <laughs> yeah, so um, there's there's a whole stream of content that's coming out of this that we're really excited. I think it's the, you know, the, the, probably the biggest and brightest that both of us have done as companies to really push an, you know, push an agenda. Let's start with the, uh, the the Financial Markets Insights paper. Tell us a little bit about what, what people can expect to see in that and when yeah, where, what and when they can find it. So that's going to be coming out very soon. Uh, we're just in the kind of process of finalising the design. So we've spoken to about five or six different people from both the traditional finance world and the kind of blockchain sort of neo world, if you like, about how they see the era of convergence coming together. And I think it's going to be very interesting read just to sort of set the scene really for this deeper dive of the documentary. And then we've got on, on November the 23rd, we're going to do a, a live event and hopefully have some of the... Uh, sharpest thinkers, brains and, and, and people of interest in the, in the room. I think it's going to be a really great event there with the panel again discussing and unpacking this, this whole, whole process. What can people expect to see and talk about in that, that conversation? Well, that's going to be really exciting because that's where we're actually going to unveil some of this documentary so people will be able to see at least some of it for the first time. And you know, what we really want to do is bring together people who are very knowledgeable in this space. So they might be from traditional finance, but they're moving into the digital side, or they might be from the digital side, but they understand the traditional world. So people who can really see both you know, where this has come from, but also where it's going and be able to unpack it for people. Because there's a lot of different aspects, as we mentioned, around this. And you know, there, there may be many, many different use cases and examples that people are interested in, but just try and give people a flavour of you know, where this is going and what the trends are, where it's heading, really. I think what's really exciting to me about this is, and I'm sure you've seen exactly the same thing, is everyone you speak to is enormously passionate about it as a market and as a mm. potential. 
So what we're having in that conversation is people there who want to learn, who want to speak to other people, who want to think, right, how can we work together? The most exciting thing for me about that event is I know that there's going to be people there who will meet other people in that, that sort of thing and come up with great ideas that can push yeah, the agenda further Yeah, I think it'll forward. be another form of convergence of ideas. Exactly. You know, because the people who are in the documentary, many of them will be coming. Yeah. So a great chance to meet all of those experts and interesting folks who've got future predictions, but also those people themselves will have great collaboration between them. And that's what we want to do. We want to make sure that this is a, an interactive session. So we want people to come with ideas, people want to come with agendas, people to come with questions. What I envisage on that particular event is a whole bunch of people sort of solving problems and creating pathways further forward. And you never know what, what can come out of that. But I'm, I've got big lofty ambitions about what it can look like. Yeah, I think it'll be fascinating. It'll be kind of like a brain's trust of all the best people who know about this topic. So that's it. Um, I think anyone who comes will get a lot out of it and obviously get the first unveiling of the film the as well. unveiling of the film as well so you know that's been a great fun we've been running all over the city we've been out in new york we've been talking to people there'll be people in far fun places from hong kong and singapore and beyond where we're having some really really interesting conversations both you and i have been having really interesting conversations with people about that so the documentary will, will be there and it will add that story and tell the story of where it goes and give you an insight into what can happen and where we go with that without that so that's going to be great fun as well right it's going to be superb fun and we've got a lot more material as well which probably won't make it into the documentary but we hope to release separately Snippets. yeah <laughs> so um we can only really take a little bit from each person but the material that's there i think is going to provide a lot of extra content and um because it's also interesting yeah. right everyone's everyone's been so far. i mean each person could be a documentary in themselves that's, really. that's exactly <laughs> the conversation yeah we have it and yeah we'll be able to take you know minutes worth of the conversation out there but there's you know people could be talking about this for, for days and hours yeah that's something which really excites and energizes me about all of this because it is people there who are who are on a mission and see this opportunity. But the thing is, is every time you sort of look at it and talk about it, there's another window that opens. Yeah. And and the the interesting thing, as I said before, is how many different companies of shapes and sizes are getting involved in it. So it's like, right, if it goes here, how can it go over there, and how can it map, and how can that person help that person? Yeah. I think it's really really interesting. Well, for me, this is a real culmination because I've been sort of banging on about this stuff since 2014. We're catching up with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like you know the the market is shifting really significantly. I think the pandemic, you know, without wanting to sort of overplay the impact of the pandemic, but I think it did make a big difference on a few different levels. I think it shifted everyone into realising that really we need to be able to do anything that we do online and remotely, yeah. including financial services. And also that, you know, a lot of companies that were working on this stuff had time rather than going around the conference circuit and the things they normally do just to actually keep building the technology and accelerating the conversations. So a lot advanced on a technical perspective in the yeah. couple of years of the pandemic. So I think what we're seeing now is a real flourishing of the post-pandemic activity. I agree. I think there's a lot to you know, a lot to be said that, that there's there's so many negatives that came out of the pandemic that actually there was a number of different positives that accelerated everything. You know, we've spoken on the show many times about cloud adoption finally in the uh, you know, in the financial markets. But this is another thing. You know, that we've had hype cycles and at various different times of I think probably we had our first event talking about crypto in 2017, 18 maybe. And I remember it sort of written off by a couple of the banks who, who were there as, mm. you know, as, 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 as a fact. It's been heavy skepticism, yeah. And then it sort of moved and it was like, right, this is going to happen very, very quickly. And you know, usually it's 10-year cycles for something like blockchain to really yeah. embed itself. And now I think it's had that next burst of where it, where it goes. And like crypto, you know, it's an undulating story with crypto, isn't it? Yeah. Full stop with, as trust and matures and that. There's all these peaks class. and troughs. I mean, obviously the market goes up and down. The, the prices certainly go up and down. Well, you know, it does very, with everything at the moment, doesn't um, it? So in a more volatile way in crypto than they do in other asset classes. Yeah. But I think the other thing is uncertainty in the world, you know, not just the pandemic, but the kind of geopolitical situation, everything that's going on in the world means that some investors have just been more open to this than they would have been otherwise. So yeah. you really saw the big explosion in DeFi happening in kind of 2020, 2021 yeah. because of that, because people are looking for alpha, they're looking for other ways to, to make money. And so I think because people dabbled a bit more and they understood it a bit more, you know, they, they got the bug and then they encouraged others. So it is a kind of a little bit of a snowball that keeps on adding more and more to mm. its size as it rolls along. And I think that, you know, that's going to be a monster. Up, it's going to yeah. be a monster soon, isn't it? <laughs> it's going to be an abominable snowman. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we, 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 in the latest issue of the Financial Technologist, we had a few articles that were based in that. There'll be another section in the December issue. So, so there'll be more insight to, to devour into this. And we encourage people to sort of come in there and get involved and, yeah, if there are people with passionate thoughts, we want to be speaking to them. And I know that you guys are great at helping people position themselves in that sort of space. 
We love helping people grow their teams in that sort of arena, but we also love helping people tell their story. So if there are people who are listening to this today who are looking to say, right, we've got something, we want to join the conversation, please do get in touch with us. We're really happy to have that chat and, uh, and help take it further forward as well. And I'm going to ask you a question which, you know, which comes up in the documentary, but you know, you're, you're on the other side of the mic on this a lot. Tell me a little bit about your predictions. Where do you think this goes? What's the potential and where, where will we be in the next five years with uh, the era of convergence? I think it's rapidly accelerating, um, which is partly why we're here talking about it. I think there's going to be a massive growth in adoption by institutions of digital assets. There's already interest, but I think they're now really seriously evaluating this. A lot of the asset managers and they're evaluating who they should go to. So you see a lot of companies recently, Nomura, BNP Paribas, you know, Cowan, others launching initiatives in this space. So I think that's going to ramp up hugely. I think DeFi needs work still because I think there's a lot of technical issues you know around interoperability around hacking around regulation if the institutions are going to get more involved that needs to be solved but DeFi certainly is also going to be a huge growth area obviously NFT is the other big one I think again there are some legal and regulatory concerns but you see enormous brands you know diving into this fashion brands sport brands music famous artists kings of Leon people tokenizing houses on the moon all kinds of crazy <laughs> stuff you know so uh, a lot of it is experimental and a lot of it is for PR to some extent and there's nothing wrong with PR coming from a PR yeah, agency. Yeah, sure, yeah. Um, but, you know, a lot of this is is kind of proofs of concept and people kind of playing with something that ultimately can be very significant for their businesses. And obviously the metaverse is the other big trend which mm. we haven't really dived into at all. But who you would have thought that you'd see banks buying land in virtual worlds yeah. you know, and setting up you know, meeting rooms and offices in the metaverse. Yeah. But... It's another channel and perhaps what will happen is that because the technology is becoming the intermediary, actually the bank's function is going to shift. It's going to shift more towards being advisors, value creators in different ways, rather than necessarily being the ones that do the mechanisms of finance. If the technology takes over and becomes the kind of infrastructure, then the bank's role will be different. And so something like the metaverse is really important, I think, for banks to start exploring because it's a different way to get different audiences you know, approached people in a different way. And I think that we'll see a lot more in that area as well. I guess the last part that we haven't spoken about is central bank digital currency. So you've mm. got now hundreds of nations around the world exploring having their own national digital currencies. So, you know, we'd have a digital pound or a digital euro or a digital dollar. And you might say, well, why do you need that if you've got cryptocurrency? But actually it's the bridge between the traditional and the decentralized world that, that will allow this all to interoperate and go much more smoothly because mm. you know ultimately people still trust governments in most countries and they want a currency that they know is backed by something and they trust the government to, to put their backing behind that currency that's the way most of our financial systems still operate and much as some people in the cryptocurrency world say well we don't need it we don't like it i think for the traditional players to get involved you'll need that bridge you'll need to be able to still hold money in fiat currency and then to be able to readily swap it with other assets. Mm. And if you've got that smooth bridge between a digital dollar or a digital pound or a digital yuan and your other digital assets, it's going to be a lot easier rather than trying to shift from the, the kind of old fashioned legacy way to the digital way. And I think they see that way. as well, don't yeah. they? That's that's the recognition. I think that's what drives the move to TradFi from DeFi at the mm. same sort of time. That's that, that's their motivators. And it's new forms them. of digital money. So you can also do new things with that. You know, you can potentially have programmable money, which means you can ask your money to do different things, perhaps welfare payments or emergency payments in terms of crisis, things like that could be sped up and done in a much better way. So it's not just about financial system, which is important, but also thinking about financial inclusion mm. or other functions that government have that could potentially be innovated with a different form of money. Yeah, very, very exciting. So there'll be people here who are itching to join the conversation, people there who've got stories that they want to share in that sort of thing. And, and as I say, that's your craft as a, as a company in the mm. organisation group. Who should be talking to you and what, what can you do for them? So obviously you can come to us at the Realisation Group. You can find me on LinkedIn. You can contact me on my email address, helen.disney at therealisationgroup.com. That's with a Z. Uh, not an S. And yeah, do get in touch. We'd love to hear from you. And what do you think What do you think you can do to help with that specifically for those companies? With the storytelling? Yeah. I mean, storytelling is what I personally love and we love as a company. So storytelling takes many forms. You know, we obviously tell people stories in terms of what they're doing as a business with their press releases. We produce a huge amount of content in terms of blogs, podcasts, webinars, research papers, other pieces of content. We help you 
get that out in the right way and keep a consistent tone of voice on social media. So you make sure that people find you on the web. And we really try to position you in the market as well. I think that's the other key thing is that there's a lot of noise out there. Everybody wants to tell their story. So how do you differentiate, you know, make your story interesting, make it simple, easy to understand, visually appealing, understandable, because there's a lot of jargon out there. Yeah. And often our, our role is to cut through the jargon, really, and help you tell your story in the best possible way. So that it yeah, I think, that, I think that's audience. been something that we've, uh, we've both learned all the way through this, that once you, uh, once you sift through all of, the, all of the words and the acronyms yeah. and everything in between, it's actually a really, really exciting story yeah. to tell. And I think people who go out there and can deliver that are going to see a wealth of opportunity at the moment. It's been brilliant. I've really enjoyed it. Every conversation I've had in this sort of space, everything we've been doing with regards to the event itself, you know, our conversations in it on a weekly basis, the chats we've been having with really, really clever, innovative people in the space, mm. I think it's going to be really interesting. So watch the documentary, come to the event, read the paper, Never get the magazine. Might even be a book. <laughs> and and, and books, are, books come after that as well. So it's really, really exciting. And we're really excited to share it all with you. Thanks so much for listening to us today. This has been Helen Disney. It's been wonderful talking to Thanks you. Thanks very much for having me, Toby. Absolute pleasure. And thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon on another episode of FinTech Focus TV. Bye for now.